the Coalition for Community Owned Safety is this hodgepodge group of nonprofits, community businesses, passionate activists, organizers, all who just believed that if we invested in social services, our city would feel safer and be safer. Public safety, when we were hearing from community and what they were saying, was not necessarily policing or any of those things. It was really about how we are cared for in our neighborhoods. We all want to live in safe and healthy communities, right? We want our communities to thrive, our residents to thrive, our kids, our elderly. We want them to thrive in these communities. Right now, we're, we're putting band-aids on these complex social problems and not getting the root causes that leads to thriving communities. The Reinvest in GR campaign was the rollout of the coalition's mission to listen to residents. These folks came to Together and decided, let's each have a conversation with our network, with residents from our community, and ask them if how the budget is currently written, how our resources, our tax dollars are currently allocated, is what they expect. If this is the best we can do, and if it's not, what does better look like and how do we get there? People are unhappy with how the city is spending its money. The budget does not reflect the level of commitment that is needed to create a safe community. And it also doesn't reflect what the city says it's committed to. When we started looking into the budget, the first thing you obviously realize is that the budget document itself is 650 pages long. It's impossible to understand for the average person. And it covers a budget of $600 million dollars the city spends annually, give or take. We just really wanted to break that down into something that was digestible, understandable for the average person. The community knows what's best for their, for their communities. They have good ideas of how we can improve and the solutions that are there. So we need to give them the knowledge and the power to have a say with how our decisions and our dollars are being spent. It's not just the story of activists and organizers thinking through the budget. It's really the community story. It's what it looks like and feels like to compile a people's agenda for Grand Rapids, Michigan. And as the second largest city in the state, a lot of us feel like it's about time we've had one. The more you dig into the numbers, the more you realize these are political choices, they're historic choices. The city has the resources to do the job to help people in a more holistic manner, and it's not. The numbers don't lie. What is city government for? Is it only for police, fire, and protecting property owners' property, making the city look good, or do they actually care about the people who live here and helping the people to have a better life? We were stunned analyzing the budget. The community was stunned hearing about the budget, and the city was stunned by the fact that the community actually cares about those details and it's important to them. We really get involved with the community and get an understanding of what the community wants, not what these large institutions wants. Everywhere there is a budget that is fueled by regular people tax dollars. Regular people should be learning about that budget and influencing how it's spent. Our coalition has shown that there's enormous thirst in the community for having knowledge to understand what the city's spending its money on. We understand that all of these things are interconnected. So you can come in at environmental justice, economic development, or housing, or mental health. Like you can come in in different spaces where it's of interest to you. The first one was police accountability. Organizations like the NAACP of Greater Grand Rapids, Link Up, Urban Core Collective, the ACLU of Michigan, the Urban League of Western Michigan, they came together to have this conversation around the history of how we've funded policing and police accountability. And residents came out and they wanted to hear about the budget. That was how it all started. Community safety is more than just policing. And I think that when we can expand our vision of what it means to be safe in our community, then we're going to bring forward a fuller and more realistic view of what it is to be safe in our community. Continuing to put a Band-Aid on it and funding the police in absorbent numbers isn't getting us the results we want, so it's time to try something that's more efficient and effective use of our, of our dollars. When we ask ourselves what we want city services to look like, it is a budgetary question. We have to ask why is all that money going to emergency services and not addressing root causes. What we're hearing from the community is that they want investments in parks and housing and mental and physical health and schools and education because that gets to these root causes of these complex problems. We're not talking about reform and accountability anymore. We're saying police accountability is spending money other places because that's more effective and efficient. 
our local community is coming out of a lot of harm that has been done by systems that are set in place to protect us, to care for us. The systems themselves are not responding in a way in which make us feel safe, make us feel seen, make us feel heard, make us feel cared for. I'm a third generation here in the city of Grand Rapids. I watched my mom and my grandmother struggle and lose the investments due to the systems and processes that are in place. And that's not what I desire to do. I want to have a full plate, a full meal, like other people that don't look like me. When we took the trolley ride, a lot of people were unaware of the dynamic black history that exists here in the city of Grand Rapids. There's been displacement and dismantling of our small businesses and development. Right now, uh, you've got these developers like CWD, Rockford Construction, RVD. The city is owned by the billionaire class. A lot of the property in this 49507 neighborhood is left vacant. People buy it, they say, I'm not gonna do anything with it until the gentrification happens and the neighborhood explodes. Randall Jelks would often say that there's an embarrassment of riches in Grand Rapids. We're one of the wealthiest cities in the country, which makes us one of the wealthiest cities in the world. 47% of all African Americans that live in the city limits are at the federal poverty level or lower. How do we begin to clean up our community so that it's a healthy and more vibrant vibrant community to live, walk, and play in for our people. Our strategy in this corridor is anti-displacement, development without displacement. So that is one of our goals, but we don't know what that looks like. Right now we do know what it feels like and it's not good. We invest differently. My name is Eric Freeman. I am the founder of Mindset Meals. Mindset Meals is a social enterprise in the food justice and mental health space. Nutrition obviously plays a big role in mental health and physical health. We need to really allocate some of those funds so folks that are disproportionately disadvantaged can have access to fresh food, to mental health resources, and to physical health resources. There's farmer markets out here and things of that nature. That is a solution, but what about the folks that don't have the capacity to cook or they don't have the time to cook? We provide fresh, nourishing, ready-to-eat meals. So let's fund that. My name is Nancy. I am part of the Urban Core Collective and I work as a climate justice organizer. My name is Erica. The reason why I got involved with the coalition is because I'm really passionate about the environment. Getting involved with reinvest felt like a natural fit for our group because of the intersectionality between justice, climate, safety, all the things that work together for the benefit of our community. A lot of people were really interested in how housing is intersected with that. It's not just it being affordable, but the safety of that home the standard of the home, how we're getting our energy in that home. A lot of times the people that are affected are these frontline communities who are the least responsible for climate change, but they're the ones that are getting hit with the worst of the impacts with things like higher bills, dealing with pollution because they're generally next to manufacturing plants that are spewing out a lot of this stuff into the air, into the water, soil. Citywide composting is huge because food waste is a huge contributor to um, our climate issue. It's a really solid way to implement a project that that we all could do as a city without having to break large barriers. Hello, my name is Barbara Howard. I am with Grand Rapids for Affordable Housing. If you're unhoused, you really don't have any stability in your life. There isn't a whole lot you can do about that if you do a job that doesn't pay you a living wage. Rents are going up, gentrification's happening. We have no control over that. The city of Grand Rapids should care that their homeless population is increasing. They should care that some 700 children go to Grand Rapids public schools and are picked up from encampments or homeless shelters. I think a lot of times we can devote a lot of funds to the affordable housing rental market, but we're not providing people the support and opportunities, the assistance in order to enter the housing market and start building generational wealth. We all know that large percentage of our population of our residents were left out of the home buying process not that long ago due to redlining and different government systems and policies. It causes all sorts of distress not just for the people who are unhoused, but for the city in general. Turning a blind eye to it doesn't fix it. They're not gonna disappear. These people aren't gonna go away. 
The meeting was spectacular in my mind because so many people were so engaged with so many different ideas. This is the kind of education we need to do citywide. People show up because it's life or death. They were there to say, we need this, we need this, especially shelters for homeless families, especially places where they can transition, where they can get the support. And then we need the housing. So this is just the beginning. We've built this roadmap that showcases exactly how residents feel. We've built power for people who haven't had it before. We are sowing the seeds and tilling the ground for the way that we can work in our community together to help advocate and activate so that we might have more power around how we want the conditions to be where we live. We recognize and the reason that we built this coalition is that we need to build power in this community and equip our community, our residents, to have a voice in how our tax dollars are spent and how to have a voice in politics beyond the ballot box. And the more people we can gather, the more pressure we can put on the commission. Don't be shy. Say what you care about. Meet up with other people who also care about what you care about and get involved. We've clearly shown that the budget's inadequate for what we need as a city. And now what we have to do is make sure that that happens and that the policy gets changed. We'll continue to work on this. We'll continue to practice. We'll continue to stand in solidarity. We'll continue to address systemic issues that are making conditions for us no longer acceptable. The Coalition for Community on Safety is still growing. We believe everyone has a role in it, but it's our city and it's our money, and so we're using our say. Okay, I'm like sweating now, Topher. I'm like, did I say what I was supposed to say? What were the words?